the U.S. Navy introduced this crazy robotic AI-powered submarine. The co-founder to Valve is taking his Neuralink competitor out of stealth mode. A new Carnegie Mellon AI can now decode and interpret human intentions. Yuval Harari pointed out that maybe the world should be putting all this money into figuring out how human intelligence works before we build these massive AI systems. An AI based on our flawed understanding of ourselves is a very dangerous thing. A new design allows drones to attach to power lines to recharge. Not really sure who's paying for that. A new study showing that Gen Z mostly doesn't really care if an influencer is a human or not. New David Shapiro podcast came out where we talk about designing your environment so it doesn't design you. Tesla dropped this sick drone footage that flies all the way through the Giga Berlin factory and it's like, it's just hard to look away. It's crazy what robots can do. AI accuracy and predicting patient outcomes, new all time high. And what's probably the most important study that I've ever shared on this channel, empathy is contagious. But first, let's check into our AGI countdown. Dr. Allen says we are 73. Oh my gosh, we went up a percentage from the last video. Oh God. All right, look, just keep it cool, everyone. Let's just go read the article, see what we got. All right, GPT-4 plus the Unitree robot, Dr. Eureka paper, which we just covered last video. Incredible. We trained a robot dog to balance and walk on top of a yoga ball purely in simulation. And the main thing was they added an LLM to the pipeline. I guess that's probably worth 1% closer. So we are... Now officially at 73% of the way to AGI, according to Dr. Allen's conservative countdown. There it is, little, little spot-like dog just hanging out on that bouncy ball. But don't worry, to put your mind at ease, I'm just gonna show you this new crazy weapon that DARPA released into the ocean that's an autonomous submarine that looks like it could seek and destroy anything. So these are images of the new prototype uncrewed underwater vehicle UUV. So this thing is crazy. It can transport stuff. It can actually break apart into pieces and be transported in regular crates. So based on the shape, people are thinking that it's built more for endurance than it is for speed. So it's also got the ability to anchor itself to the bottom of the ocean and then go into hibernation mode where the motion of the ocean that rocks it is actually charging it back up. This is crazy. Check out this guy. His name is Gabe Newell. So I didn't know him before this article, but he is the guy behind Valve, which I've definitely heard of. And he has been working on a stealth company with a lot of interesting resources and a whole lot of money, working on something just like Neuralink, a brain interface, and they are out of stealth mode now. So this is his company called Starfish. You can see Gabe there is the co-founder along with physicists, hardware engineers, neuroengineers, scientists, and so much more. And of course, being in charge of one of the largest gaming ecosystems in the world and starting to build stuff that connects directly to your brain, you have to wonder if he's thinking about the one day when those converge. And when he's talking about this new system, listen to this weird quote. Where it's gonna get weird is when you become editable through a BCI, a brain computer interface, including the ability to edit one's own feelings. But the thing that's really interesting about Gabe Newell as an entrepreneur is he understands reinforcing that mechanism between making a decision and the environment changing because that's what kind of makes a good game better than a bad game. Because in the real world, I have to write up lists of stuff I have to go to the grocery store to buy. And I've never thought to myself that realism is fun. I go play games to have fun. Yeah, maybe the future is going to be a lot more fun for us because it's going to be a lot more responsive. Maybe all the robots in our environment and our talking refrigerator and our talking toy robot dinosaurs will all just react when we look at them and it's going to feel like we have more control of our environment and the world the real world will be more game like but also we'll be plugging in these you know bci units into our brain and then we get a better reactive experience too like so. comment subscribe there's a lot to unpack there, but if you're not that interested in drilling a hole in your skull and plugging something directly into your brain right now, there is some good news for you. Some researchers, Carnegie Mellon University, have actually started using AI models to pick up on those minute details that can be detected outside the brain. We put a cap over the scalp to record a multi-channel electric signal. It could be magnetic signal, reflecting dynamic, instantaneous and bring activation. A much better interface, a much less clear signal, but can artificial intelligence cut through that noise to get to the signal? It seems like it. Okay, so 28 people put these EEG trackers on their head, so it can track the electricity as it flows through the brain. And they're just asked to keep track of this thing moving around the screen. 
Like imagine a little dot going back and forth with Pong or something like that. And then using that data to train an AI system, they were able to decode and interpret human intentions for continuous object movement using the BCI sensor data. How three-dimensionally, how the neural information processing propagation is going to be occurring. A couple of things that have been said by Yuval Harari I thought were worth mentioning. I really was impacted when I thought about how quickly we're moving towards building these digital systems without putting that much money into understanding the human brain in the first place. Obviously, I can see how a large language model is a much more profitable thing. So that's, I guess, guaranteed to happen because that's how free markets work. But I'm always shocked by how many things that GPT-4 can do now that it couldn't before, even when it's the same model. It's not till it gets out into the real world and people start like, pinching and prodding and testing it that we actually discover what it's capable of. If, if for every dollar and every minute that we spend on developing AI, artificial intelligence, we spend another dollar and another minute in developing human consciousness, the human mind will be okay. The danger is that we spend all our effort on developing an AI at a time when we don't understand ourselves, and then letting the AI take over, that's, that's a, a road to a human catastrophe. You, know, like you might have heard that phrase, like sometimes you need to know the rules before you can break them. Like we should understand how flight works before we build an airplane, even if you have the Wright brothers flying something. You're like, do we really understand lift and like how to build the perfect wing and like what it happens when we build it wrong? And it just seems like before we build some hyper intelligence, it might be really good to understand like our own weaknesses, biases, how the brain works, where consciousness comes from, and some of that stuff first. But I know it's not gonna happen, but just food for thought, like an abstract concept that we should probably be in the conversation. Now check out this sick design for a drone. Very innovative. Like I've been watching some pretty interesting drone videos for a long time, but I've never seen someone come up with this model. And that's after seeing drones inside of these crazy mesh devices. I've seen ones that can like have two wheels and sort of roll and fall over. But to actually latch on to a power line actually makes a ton of sense. Like it would make sense to me that if in the future, tens of thousands of drones are like all around your neighborhood, dropping off packages, doing all this kind of stuff that maybe they should stay on the same path as where the wiring is. Telephone lines tend to sort of be designed in reasonable places, usually like above sidewalks and alongside roads and all sorts of places where we could also designate maybe drones to be. Just a really interesting idea. Like if a drone starts losing power or like it's really windy and it uses more power than it expected, just to be able to always latch on to that up in the air so it's not like on the ground we're not building new infrastructure for these things to like fall onto this is pretty pretty fascinating and i think super underrated and useful yeah and speaking of underrated and useful let's talk about gen z so yeah i generally feel bad for the youngest generation i feel like they're always like old men being like yo you're just get off my lawn you're lazy and blah 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 because they just don't like change and i'm old enough now that when i read articles like this that gen z mostly doesn't care if an influencer is an actual human or not i do i get that same sense i'm getting old and like don't change like humans matter and i'm just trying to get my head around the fact that ai influencers all over youtube and instagram will be just as popular if not much more popular they offer a bunch of advantages that humans don't. And of course that's kind of scary because as a human, I'm sort of like trying to make it on YouTube and I realize that I'm definitely gonna get replaced. There's going to be a 24 hour avatar that's gonna tell you AI news with like much more humor than me. It's going to be much faster at creating content. It's gonna generate way more ad revenue for YouTube. And the truth is this generation is going to accept that avatar as just as entertaining and just as worth their time. So there's no getting around that, but here's the facts. This was a study with 2000 respondents across the UK and US. And the TLDR is that if an influencer has a lot of influence, the numbers like subscribers and uh, followers and those kind of things, that's gonna matter more than if it's a human or an avatar. But like, here's where the big shift is happening. So right now, it's fair to say that most consumers follow influencers who align with their personal values and seem authentic. And this is especially true for millennials, Gen X, and baby boomers. But that is not the case for Gen Z. Only 35% of the respondents say that they care about authenticity, while 47% care more about follower right. count. I mean, we call them influencers. Like Gen Z is the first generation to actually just care about their influence. Look, as long as those virtual influencers feel honest and unbiased, entertaining and educational, it's gonna resonate. Also, if you're not sick of me by the end of this video and you wanna see a little bit more about me interacting with someone who I really love watching on YouTube, David Shapiro, I am on his newest podcast.
It's always a pleasure to get time to hang out with him. I would say the highlights are when they were debating about willpower and how important it is to actually change your environment so that you don't need to use too much willpower, but also to be very cognizant that your environment has all of these subtle influences over your day-to-day -day life. We also talked a little bit about the splintering of society if we have like everybody getting their own custom information from everything being generated through generative AI. And there was a lot to chew on in that. And while you're listening to that, if you want to see just how incredible some of these factories are where they build electric cars, Giga Berlin has fly through 2.0 and you know, they just took one of those tiny little drones and just explored the entire assembly line. And just to see the metal stamped out and the cars painted and just kind of how well kind of colored and designed the factory is, it just was fascinating. I don't know. I guess I just didn't really understand what it's like to see cars built at scale. And it was just something about this video. I just thought, wow, like we might have so many products in the future, especially if all of these robotic arms can just custom stamp out anything from like a car to whatever else you can imagine and 3D printers become more integral and everything becomes sort of adaptive. Maybe factories will look like this but be even smarter and have more resources available to just build whatever we want maybe it's not about searching amazon for products as much as typing into the future of amazon what it is that you need and some nearby factory that has the ability to make it can just reconfigure itself to make the product to your specifications and then you know drone drops it off or something and honestly it's a whole bunch of eye candy too just to see the whole thing come together it's actually funny i can't help but think about how these people must be like ah what's that drone doing is it like flies right through their work they must have made an announcement like everyone it's going to be a drone flying through the factory just ignore it if it comes by you or maybe they were more just like look busy for the next 10 minutes Okay, so jumping over to medicine and artificial intelligence, scientists have designed a new artificial intelligence model that emulates randomized clinical trials. So the model was front loaded with de-identified data on millions of patients gleaned from healthcare claim information submitted by employers, health plans, and hospitals. This is how you build foundation models, a strategy similar to that of generative tools like chat GPT. But, a, but that's a really interesting use case for transformers, a special data set, and the outcome would be super helpful to the world. Guys from the lab said that this model is better than a crystal ball. Based on big data and foundational model AI, we have a reasonable confidence to be able to say what treatment strategy is better than another. This is the kind of positive AI use cases that I just think is so interesting. And now for an article that probably could change the world because it could spread like a virus and make everyone who gets infected by its life better. And in one of the more powerful things that I've thought about is in the same way that a virus can spread around the world incredibly fast, it turns out that empathy can spread through social interactions in a very similar way. So yes, you really are the company that you keep. So this research article published in the prestigious PNAS. What did he say? Hey! titled The Social Transmission of Empathy Relies on Observational Reinforcement Learning. You can see this bell curve of empathy moving from low empathy to high empathy, depending on the company that you keep. So in this paper, they basically research something that like, I feel like intuitively a lot of us know, but maybe not that as many as we should. It's basically watching how people react to somebody else's pain. So either with a lot of empathy or with very little, and that will influence how participants in this study start to mirror these reactions themselves. Like, if you see somebody being super compassionate to somebody else going through a hard time, it kind of nudges you to be a little bit more compassionate yourself. And unfortunately, the reverse, too. When you see people being stoic and standoffish, you end up becoming more stoic and standoffish yourself. And it's not just about asking them questions, either. This is an FRMI study. So they looked at their brains when they were actually acting this way. And they could showcase specific brain regions that were associated with empathy being more or less active. But the cool thing about empathy being contagious is maybe it can spread fast throughout the whole world if we all just, you know, get it started. So Microsoft, who has been leading the AI charge for a little while now, we actually published some research about how AI is being used at work. So use of generative AI has nearly doubled in the last six months with 75% of global knowledge workers using it. 95% that AI helps them save time. 85% say it helps them focus on their most important work. 84% say that it helps them be more creative and 83% say that they enjoy their work more. 60% of leaders worry that their organization's leadership lacks a plan and a vision to implement AI. 
So yeah, if you like this kind of stuff, you watch this channel, obviously, then maybe you should think about becoming a consultant because it seems like a lot of companies need a plan put in place. And you can tell the people that even are using it are relatively new to it. They're still in the learning phase. 46% of them started using AI less than six months ago. 78% of AI users are, I don't really get this, but bringing their own AI to work, BYO AI. I mean, I know BYOB, but that's for beer at like a barbecue. Like who brings their own AI to work? Like chat GPT on your cell phone or a rabbit R1 or something? Oh, here's a demographic chart of BYO AI. Bring your own AI to work. Looks like Gen Z is the most likely to bring their own AI to work. And boomers, still surprisingly, 73% are BYO AI, okay. 66% of leaders say they would not hire somebody without any AI skills. Like if you get a job almost anywhere, you're expected to know how to like use emails, Excel sheets, basic file transfers, stuff like that. And AI is gonna be no different in another couple of years. Wait, what am I saying? Just 66% of people said they need it this year. So yeah, it's required right now. So this is the hidden talent shortage. So while employees fear job loss due to AI, most leaders are actually worried that they can't fill key roles. Definitely with the world of AI coming, engineering, cybersecurity, creative design, technical services, HR, product development, customer service, tons of room there. Now let's jump in to the ocean, the deep ocean. Artificial intelligence has found a new alphabet used by sperm whales. I had that tangent in the video plan from my very first outline. I was like, I'm just gonna throw sperm whales out there and see how they handle it. So this paper is diving into the communication system between sperm whales. So sperm whales actually communicate across long distances and these patterns mean things and they're a series of clicks to our ears. But a new artificial intelligent model has shown that there is a phonetic alphabet of sorts that they're using. Tempo, rhythm, ornamentation, rubato. Ornamentation, it's a new word to me, but some codas, which is the clicks, feature extra clicks that are not part of their templates. Okay, so you can see that one up there. And here you go, this is the sperm whale phonetic alphabet. So yeah, making progress soon, you should be able to have a full-blown conversation with a sperm whale. Our next research paper is called Accounting for AI and Users Shaping One Another, the Role of Mathematical Models. Cornell, Berkeley, Princeton, University of Texas, what's up? And they're pointing out that when we generally think about all these new models being introduced to the public, we think about them as influencing us, which is true, but it's also only part of the story. So they came up with a mathematical model to describe both of the interactions and how they influence each other together. And they suggest that we should be using these formal mathematical models to better capture the dynamics. And the advantage would be that if we did this, then we could better predict how society is going to change as a whole. For example, the authors in this paper use content recommendation systems, so like the ones that you'll see on YouTube or Netflix, that show not only does AI affect what we watch, the way we watch things starts to affect what the models recommend to other people. And that's the kind of feedback loop that like you've seen on social media where someone says something and everyone has to respond and then the whole thing just kind of like brrr, takes off. but. I don't know if it's been formalized very well. In fact, in some cases, it just seems like a mystery what blows up and what doesn't. And now we're having that same kind of problem with AI. So this is an attempt to start to formalize it, understand it, and maybe predict and harness it at some point. All right, so now let's analyze the last video I put up, which didn't really do super well. All right, now you guys know how much I want to make YouTube work as a full-time living, and I appreciate you giving me feedback on some of these videos, so I would love some on this one. I don't know what I did wrong. I was coming off this really hot upload, and then this one I thought was just as interesting. It was called, Which Weapons Does an Autonomous AI Robot Dog Choose? And I, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to experiment with some other titles maybe now, but I've got this crazy robot with a flamethrower on it, which couldn't be more engaging in my opinion, and... There's some really interesting stuff in here, but look, here's how the analytics are. I'm not even hitting a thousand. I'm kind of in the mid, mid range here and kind of dropping down below, like the lower part of average. And I just don't know, 5% click through rate is pretty darn low. So something about maybe that flame throwing dog just didn't catch on like I thought it might. I mean, looking at the two side by side, I don't know, CEO of major AI company and this one in the wild. I mean, they're both good, I thought, from my opinion's point of view, maybe the text in the screen is not doing it for you guys maybe you just like that look like forehead smashed so yeah if you have any thoughts on why maybe it didn't work like drop them in the comments below i'll check them out and that click through rate's even worse when you think about 66.7 percent of people actually being subscribed already so they kind of do know what my face looks like and know that i just published a video after four days of not uploading too which is a little bit longer than i like to go 
But look, 12 new subscribers, still more subscribers than before I posted. So thank you. I'm not having the success that I need to do it full time. So if you could leave a super thanks, I think that really helps the algorithm. I'm in it with you to, to make improvements.